Hello, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe Jewell, and today we have a lot of news to cover, including Morgan Wallen defending Taylor Swift, Jason Kelsey being called Taylor Swift's brother-in-law, and a very interesting anniversary that happened one year ago today. Let's get into it. Okay, first thing is first, Morgan Wallen defended Taylor Swift just a few days before Morgan Wallen got arrested in Nashville. Kind of a crazy chain of events for Mr. Wallen. Let's break it down, shall we? So Morgan Wallen was playing two consecutive nights in Indianapolis, uh, I believe on April 4th and April 5th. And he um, took a moment during his concert to thank his fans and to reveal that um, he was... um, performing at the single most attended concert in the history of that building. This is actually his exact quote. Quote, they told me right before I walked on stage that this is the single most attended concert in the history of this building and that we're the first people to do it two nights in a row. So thank you for making it possible for me to say that. I'm going to say that till Taylor Swift comes to town in the fall. And that is when the crowd started to boo, which is so lame. I'm sorry if you don't like Taylor Swift, that's fine. You don't have to like her, I suppose. But booing her for potentially, probably, almost certainly going to break the attendance record in that concert venue is very, is very lame. And I don't know. It's just, that's not even, we don't even have to spend time or energy focusing on that. But then Morgan Wallen, to his credit, came to Taylor's defense and said, told his crowd, like, we don't have to boo her, guys. We don't have to boo her. And honestly, part of me wonders if he was only saying that because he knew that if he didn't, he was going to be the subject of a lot of um, vitriol and hate on the internet. Um, So whether he actually believes that and would truly defend Taylor Swift in the privacy of his own home, um, or if he was just doing it for the cameras, we'll never know. But I do appreciate that he at least stood up for Taylor and. Told this crowd to stop to stop complaining and to stop booing because again it's just it's very lame. Like music artists are not sports teams, you know. Like you don't. It's not like Taylor Swift versus Morgan Wallen, and so therefore you have to boo Taylor Swift if you're a fan of Morgan Wallen. You can like lots of different types of artists, and you can also just feel very neutral about artists, and you don't have to be a fan. It's totally fine if people don't like Taylor Swift, but you don't have to be hateful and boo. That's my feeling about the whole situation, but. Not that this is a Morgan Wallen channel, but it was interesting that then a few days later, Morgan Wallen found himself arrested in Nashville after he reportedly threw a chair off the roof of a bar, uh, I believe it was Chief's Bar in Nashville, threw a chair off of the roof and it landed. Thankfully, thankfully, it didn't hit anybody because it could have caused some serious damage, but it landed like just mere feet away from cops. And so that is why Morgan ended up arrested. Um, again, thank goodness that nobody got hurt because that could have been really, really bad, especially considering the fact that he was on a rooftop, like could have done some serious, serious damage. But Morgan Wallen has had quite the um, the list of just bad things. Like he's just, he's somebody who has had a tough go of it, much to his own doing. I mean, he's definitely like, um, he just needs to get his stuff together because it's kind of like one thing after the next, after the next, after the next with him. And it's not cool. It's not cool. So that's your Morgan Wallen Taylor Swift news update for the day. Um, moving on to some other things that happened over the weekend, Jason Kelsey, <laughs> despite the fact that Taylor and Travis are not married, Jason Kelsey is now being referred to as, um, Taylor Swift's brother-in-law, which is pretty funny. I mean, we did have during the Chiefs football season, we did have Tony Romo, the NFL announcer, um, repeatedly saying that Taylor Swift was Travis Kelsey's wife, which was funny the first time he did it. And then the second time it was like, is he doing this on purpose just to stir up something? But it's now happening to Jason. So Jason Kelsey made a surprise appearance at uh, WWE WrestleMania on Saturday, which is iconic in and of itself. I mean, this man retired and is just having the best time of his life and doing all these fun little side quests, which I love for him. And by the way, like maybe Jason Kelsey should be involved in wrestling a little bit more because he's super theatrical. Like, I feel like this could be a lane for him for sure. But uh, 
Pat McAfee, who's also a, he has a show on ESPN, a uh, former athlete. Once Jason and his teammate came out to do their little bit, and they took off their, took off their masks, um, Pat said, welcome to WrestleMania, Philadelphia Eagles. And then the other announcer said to Pat, isn't that what's her name's brother-in-law? Which then led Pat to start singing the song 22. Um, so Taylor and Travis are not married yet. And part of me feels bad that Jason is now like known as, you know, Taylor Swift's brother-in-law rather than legendary NFL star, former center for the Philadelphia Eagles, Jason Kelsey. I mean, of course, there's definitely people who do view him as that, but it made me laugh. And also if you haven't seen the videos of Jason at um, WrestleMania, then you got to go and do it because it's pretty, it's pretty iconic. Um, And then the last piece of news that I just wanted to briefly touch on which is um, exactly one year ago today, April 8th, it was announced to the world that Taylor Swift and Joe Alwyn broke up. And I just have to say, as a lifelong Swifty, and I'm sure people watching this, you are as well, I feel like we probably all know or remember where we were when we got that news. I certainly remember seeing the notification and at first being like, there's no way this is real. And then it becoming pretty clear that it in fact was real. Um, and it's crazy to think where we've where we were a year ago and now where we are today and how much has changed in Taylor Swift's life in a year. It, it felt like during her time with Joe, obviously it was very private. She didn't really show herself very much. She wasn't really out and about. A large part of that had to do with the fact that we also were living through a pandemic during a couple years of their time together, but she just wasn't really out and about. Yes, she was, she was putting out albums, putting out music, all that stuff was great. But she's just done so much in the year that they've broken up. I mean, the Eras Tour, obviously an iconic world dominating tour that's going to go down in the history books and be remembered forever. She then starts to date an NFL tight end playing for the reigning Super Bowl champions, starts to go to football games, gets into her WAG era, then proceeds to like be at the Super Bowl and the Chiefs win the Super Bowl and she goes. And then she announces this this new album that, that that's coming out. She wins album of the year for her previous album. Like Taylor Swift has just, I don't know, she's a great example of like you could, it can be so difficult to get out of a long-term relationship, um, especially when you probably saw a future with this person and, and had all these hopes and, and dreams. And I think she's proof that like sometimes when you ha- when you end things, you then step into like the best period of your life. Um, and I think she's just a great example of, of that, that it can be so scary and so terrifying. And you can be like, I don't know what's going to happen if I break up with this person. I think she's proof that you can end something and, uh, and go, then go on to like completely dominate and, and enter your best era, no pun intended, yet. So that is it for today's show. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments about all the things we talked about. We are less than two weeks away from Torture Poets Department, so we're going to be breaking that down every single day going forward throughout the next couple of weeks. Obviously, once it's out, we're going to be dissecting it. I mean, left, right, center. So make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.